process needs no soil, no sunlight, and uses less water than conventional farming. The technology is called aeroponics. All right, so you got traditional farming where you just take a plant, throw it in the ground, water a little bit, and you're good to go. And then there's hydroponics, where what you do is you let the roots of the plant dangle and submerge in a nutrient-dense liquid. And then after that, you have aeroponics, which the roots dangle in the air, and then you spray them with a nutrient-dense mist. So why would you ever use aeroponics or hydroponics when they're more expensive and more complex than traditional farming? Well, for one, water. By the way, if you're watching this, please stay hydrated. Thank you. Did you know that on average, farms around the world account for nearly 70% of all water that's consumed annually? The problem with traditional farming is that studies have shown that about 40% of all water used goes to waste because of evaporation or poor ir 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 irrigation. Poor irrigation. However, with hydroponics, you use about 10% of the water that you would with traditional farming. And then with aeroponics, use about 25% of that water. And then so that makes it um, a lot better. Because aeroponics is a closed system, there is no room for evaporation. The only water that's used in the system is used to directly fuel the plant's growth. And that's why they're using it on the space station. Here they are celebrating having the first harvest of lettuce grown. I actually made a little aeroponic setup a little while ago, and so I go into the specialty store. I'm asking the guy questions. I'm like, hey, so I'm trying to grow some herbs with an aeroponic system. And he goes, uh, herbs. Sure. You know, little did he know I actually just want to grow some, <laughs> grow some herbs. It ended up being pretty successful. This is it after four days, and you can see all the root growth. None of that was there before. So, yeah, I ended up growing some sage and some basil, and here's what they look like afterwards. All right, so if you want to make one of these things, here's how you're going to do it. So you got to start off, you got to get yourself a nice paint bucket. You want to get one that has a darker color, just so it doesn't let any light in to the main body of it, uh, so you don't grow any algae. And the next thing you want to do, you're going to want to cut some holes up in the top that you're going to put some little uh, mesh buckets into later. These are little mesh buckets you can buy in just about any hardware store. They work perfectly fine. And then I filled them with uh, aquarium gravel, and that seemed to work perfectly. And then the last step is to get the mist, you need to buy one of these ultrasonic atomizers. And then I wrapped it in tin foil to block out a little more sunlight, a little more heat, and you're good to go. And no, this isn't just a middle school science experiment where you're just trying to grow plants with random stuff. This is real science. And around here on this channel, we're very serious. NASA saying they can grow plants three times quicker with aeroponics than if they were grown traditionally. And because it's a modular system, that means you can vertically integrate and end up growing 5, 10, 20 times more in the same square footage as you could with traditional farming. It's just a question of how high would you like to build. And stay tuned for more just after a quick word from our sponsor. We don't have a sponsor. We have 34 subscribers. Anyway, farming and agriculture takes up an incredible amount of space to the point where it's actually a plot point in many science fiction movies. For example, in Blade Runner 2049, one of the opening scenes where he's flying over it, who knows what that is, but it's very clear that that is like aerial footage of farmland. And you know what I just found out? It looks like that because it actually is aerial footage of farmland. And additionally in Interstellar. We didn't run out of television screens and planes. We ran out of food. The world needs farmers. The more people you have, you need much more land to grow stuff with. So in the modern day, farmland and agriculture takes up about 12% of the world's land inhabited by humans. Meaning that for each human, there is 0.208 hectares of farmland per person just in the United States. That is 22,442 square feet per person. That means in the U.S., per person, there is 2.7 acres of farmland. Per person. Let me help you wrap your head around that number real quick. That means 2.7 acres per person. That comes out to about two football fields. And then for the European crowd, that's about one and a half soccer pitches. And then for my one North Korean viewer, um, that's, that's a lot of, of land. Did you know that there's 2.7 acres of farmland per citizen in the United States? 
Dude, Ryan, I swear, that's probably the ninth time you've okay. told us that. Okay. Like, all right. This means that this system is perfect for people in places without a ton of water. However, there are some issues. If it's so great, why aren't we doing this everywhere? Now, I don't know if you could tell just by watching this, but I don't really know what I'm talking about, so this might be a little oversimplified. The simple answer is cost. Coincidentally, the planet we live on is called Earth. You see where I'm going with this? It's because there's a lot of it. The other issue is that these systems have an upfront cost associated with them. It costs a lot of money to set these things up, and it takes experts to run them. Another issue is that these plants are very vulnerable in this sort of suspended state, is that just a few hours of downtime can cause you to lose the entire yield. Now you still run this problem with traditional farming, however, dirt doesn't break. Hey guys, you know there's 2.7 acres? Shut the f up. Get it off. Jesus. Shut. I hate you. That's all folks, thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.